Well, hello again, everyone. Uh, we're beginning a series of discussions on some of the more, shall we say, mysterious people in the New Testament. Mysterious not in the sense that we don't know who they were, but how much information we don't have about them. And yesterday we began speaking about the man we call Peter, whose real name was Simon Bar-Jonah, Bar, meaning the son of uh, Jonah. And we ended with Jesus and Peter first meeting thanks to Andrew. Now, before I read that account, I want to share something with you. Notice how many times when we read scripture, how often someone is introduced to Jesus by someone else. That's called evangelization. Evangelization means introducing others to the gospel. It doesn't mean just standing on the street corners, but it means making a personal encounter happen. And Andrew takes Peter and introduces him to Jesus. And we left off with Jesus seeing Peter coming toward him. And as he sees him, he says, ah, you are Peter. And upon this rock, you, I will build my church. Now notice his name was Simon Bar-Jonah. It wasn't Peter. It was Simon, the son of Jonah. And Jesus says, you're going to be Peter in the Aramaic Cephas, which means the rock. And when you build something on rock, as you know, that foundation is so sturdy that very few things can destroy it. And so when Jesus says to Peter, you will be the rock upon whom I will build my church, Peter steps back and can't quite understand exactly what Jesus is saying. Now that's the first encounter. Let's take a look how that happened. And there are really four instances in the New Testament where that event is recorded. The first one is from the Gospel of John. And it's John uh, chapter 1, verse 40. Listen to how St. John records the encounter. One of the two had followed him after hearing John was Simon Peter's brother. The first thing he did was to seek out his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah. This term means the anointed one. He brought him to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are son of John. You are Simon Barjona. Your name shall be Cephas, which means Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. That's one of the first encounters where John has Jesus meeting Peter because of Andrew. Andrew was the one that made the connection. The second encounter, if I could go to that, comes from the Gospel of Matthew. And I have to say that both Matthew and Mark, if you look at their two references in their respective Gospels, both say the same thing, but say it in a less dramatic way than we're going to hear at the very end. But listen to how Matthew and Mark essentially record how Jesus met Peter on the way. As he was walking along the Sea of Galilee, he watched two brothers, Simon and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately abandoned their nets and became his followers. He walked along farther and saw two other brothers, James and Zebedee. He called them immediately. They left the boat and followed him. Now that's not very dramatic. It doesn't say anything about Andrew being the one that made the connection. But there's one final reference in the scripture in which we'll hear how that did happen. And that takes place in the Gospel of St. Luke, and that's chapter 5, 
uh, verse uh, uh, 6. Um, excuse me, is it verse 6? Verse 8, I'm sorry. So, chapter 5, verse 8. At the sight of this, Simon fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Leave me, Lord, leave me, for I am a sinful man. For indeed, amazed at the catch they had made, seized him and all of his shipmates as well as James and John's, the sons of Zebedee. And what was Jesus' response? Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. With that, they left everything and followed Jesus. Now, what do we make of those references in the Old Testament? I gave you three because Matthew and Mark are pretty much the same. Luke, Matthew, and Mark, and John. And what's really interesting about all three of them is how dramatic was the context of Jesus calling Peter to cast his net. You see, Peter and his brother Andrew, James and John, had been out fishing. And as they were out fishing, they caught nothing. And now they come back to the harbor and they encounter Jesus. And Jesus says, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And that kind of surprised them because they had never heard that term before. Fishermen meant men who caught fish. And as they caught the fish, then they came back to port and they would sell them. Now because Peter and his brother Andrew lived first in Bethsaida and then moved down to Capernaum, they were accustomed to speaking to a variety of people. There were people that were Jewish, like they were. There were people that were Greek, that were followers of pagan gods. And there was a whole assortment of other peoples and other gods. And Peter and Andrew, and by extension, James and John, certainly were able to speak uh, Hebrew, or we say Aramaic, with a Galilean accent. But they also knew a few words in the Greek. And that's why Jesus can interchange the Greek and the Aramaic. But when he says, you are Cephas, you are the rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, that changed everything. And it changed everything because now Peter's life is turned upside down. He had been a fisherman, minding his own business. He was concerned about messianic discussion and dialogue. But for them, when they went to talk and see John, they were expecting John to talk about the one who was going to lead the Jewish people against the Roman oppression. Because Rome had oppressed Israel, as we would call it, had taken over Jerusalem, and now it was a common scene every day, no matter where you were in what we would today call the Holy Land, to see Roman soldiers. And there would be checkpoints, and there'd be places where taxes were collected. There would be soldiers carrying their uh, weapons of protection. And so it wasn't uncommon to hear the term fishers of men. But when Jesus said, I'm going to make you fishers of men, that changed everything. It meant from now on, you're not going to be going out into the sea, casting a net, catching fish and bringing them back. I'm going to show you how you can become fishers of men. So we're going to stop here and we'll pick it up next time. But as always, we conclude with a prayer, a prayer of blessing, asking God always to watch over all those whom we love and to bless them and keep them safe in his loving care. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.